Christmas trees are the theme of tonight's Lackawanna County Arts and Culture Live Holiday Edition. I'm Maureen McGuigan, Deputy Director of Arts and Culture, and we're so happy to have you with us tonight. Uh, we're going to be making a paper plate Christmas tree with local artist Amber Cipriani of Electric City Art Studio. And before we get to that, though, I'm going to give you a brief, very brief, don't worry, uh, history of the Christmas tree. And I just want to make a quick plug to make sure you are shopping local this holiday season. It's especially important during this pandemic that we support our local businesses and artists. Uh, Lackawanna County, because we can't have our big outdoor winter market, has started LackawannaMarkets.com, which I encourage you to check out. There's amazing, unique vendors on there for all your shopping needs. Uh, downtown Scranton and Scranton Tomorrow have a lot of initiatives, which you can also find online. Uh, check out all of the county. Um, there's, you know, you can order online, you can curbside pickup. The vendors want to make it easier for you, but it's so important that we keep our dollars, our, our dollars here during this holiday season. So Christmas trees, uh, probably no uh, bigger symbol for the holiday than seeing a Christmas tree. They literally light up our lives. Uh, beautiful this time of year. So how did this tradition uh, get started? Well we have to go all the way back to ancient Rome to find the roots of Christmas trees. Uh, this is a picture uh, relief of the god of agriculture, Saturn. And every December around the solstice, there would be a big festival uh, to him. And uh, one of the things people would do would be to decorate their homes with evergreens. Christians in celebrating Christmas would also use evergreens and trees as a way to decorate for the celebration. It's said that Martin Luther, the 16th century Protestant reformer, was the first person to bring a Christmas tree into the house. The legend says that he was walking outside on a winter night and was so struck by the light between the evergreen that he wanted to share it with his family and brought it in the house and placed candles on it, a tradition which soon many Germans would follow. Uh, this is a beautiful picture by a German artist, impressionist painter, uh, Franz Scarbina. It, uh, he was painting in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And I like this because it does show you the Christmas tree in the background with the lighted candles on it. But the Christmas tree and that whole kind of Victorian Christmas uh, image that we often have at this time of year really came to be because of Queen Victoria. Her husband, Prince Albert, was from Germany, so he brought that tradition with him. But she was the ultimate trend senator, trend center and marketer. She actually, it was her that inspired the first Christmas card in 1843. So this engraving was actually featured in the London News in um, 1848 uh, with her and her husband and their children. And it really just spoke to people's imagination. So uh, Christmas trees became popular in England, Europe, and then eventually in the United States. So electric Christmas lights, uh, there's a couple theories floating out, out there who put the first lights on a Christmas tree, but uh, one of the more popular ones is that it was Thomas Edison. And there he is and you can see the, uh, the Christmas tree with some lights on it in the background. I just wanted to add a few pictures uh, at the county. We love to decorate. We have a lot of holiday events. Uh, this is one, I think, two years ago at our winter market. That's our amazing uh, trolley museum staff, Tom Bartleby, and amazing decorator uh, putting up the Christmas trees there for the winter market. Uh, this is last year, 2019, Courthouse Square tree, which we always get a beautiful tree. And even though we can't do the tree lighting ceremony this year, we will have a tree. So that would be a really nice, safe social distance activity to do, to go down and look at the tree, because uh, it's always beautiful. And then I just wanted to pop this one up because every year we would have a Festival of Trees, which was a fundraiser for Toys for Tots, where uh, organizations and schools and businesses would sponsor a tree and the money would be donated to Toys for Tots and we'd always have a reception 
Uh, I like this because it shows our committee that works very hard on this. Uh, Alicia Grega, I think it's left to right for you. She's in the flowered dress. Megan Passamato in the green sweater, Tenye Verkaitis in the white sweater. That's me on the end. Uh, and then behind them is our wonderful program manager, Chris Kelly. So I think it is always important to give a shout out to the people who help us make these things happen. That's why I'm really happy to have Amber here tonight to show us how to do this activity. So please enjoy and thanks for watching. Hi everybody, my name is Amber. I'm the owner of Electric City Art Studio in downtown Scranton. I'm located inside of the marketplace at Steamtown on the second floor. I do open studio on Saturdays from 12 to 4, so make sure you come in and see me. Um, I also have my website online that will show you a little bit of what we do at the studio and what we have done recently. Um, today though, I am going to show you how to do a little at home Christmas project. It will take you just a little bit of time with a little bit of supplies that you have laying around already. We're going to use some recycled things also, and we're going to make this awesome little standing Christmas tree. So to gather some of your supplies, I'm going to tell you what you have to get. Ready? First off, we need paper plates. I have three of them here. There are three tiers to the Christmas tree. If you want to do more than that, then maybe just grab an extra. You're also going to be reusing the inside of your beloved paper towel roll. These things are so hard to get now for some reason, but when you use them all up, save them because we can use them for arts and crafts. You're also gonna wanna cover your surface. So I have like a canvas drop cloth here. Um, you can use whatever you want or just be careful Use washable paints and then clean up your surface at the end. I also have some paper towels. I'm using a piece of tin foil for my paints. I have a paintbrush, some scissors. I have glue. I have Elmer's glue here, but I'm going to be using a hot glue gun um, to show you that it'll just dry a little bit quicker. Um, but if you're using doing this project with little ones, I do recommend maybe some Elmer's glue or some washable glue. I have some construction paper. I have a little container of buttons that I just had in a cabinet. And then, of course, my paints. I have some green tempera paint, which is washable. And then I have a brown acrylic um, craft paint. These are like, you know, 80 cents. Um, these are probably like a dollar or two, um, either at Michael's or probably at the dollar store. And what else? I also have some string because if you want to, you can also make your tree hanging like that. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we want to do is paint our paper towel roll. This is going to be our tree trunk. If you want, you can paint the whole thing, but it's really only the bottom of it that is going to be showing. So I only painted like the bottom half of it. So I'm going to use my tin foil to put my paint on. I like to use tin foil because it's just really easy to crumble up and throw in the garbage and like less mess. If I'm reusing paints also, I can just fold it up nice and it will save the paint for the next day for me to use. So I am going to use my brown paint to paint like the bottom third of it, I guess you would say. And I'm just going to put a nice light coat on this first so they will dry. I'm going to go all the way around, nice and even. There we go. So I have just the bottom or top part of this painted with my brown acrylic craft paint. I'm going to set this off to the side so that it can dry. The next thing that we're going to paint is our paper plates. So you're going to place your paper plates down just as if you were going to eat off of them because the textured and curved part of it really makes your Christmas tree kind of pop out a little bit. So it's kind of cool like that. If you wanted to do it the other way, you absolutely can. This is just how I did it. So I am going to now put my green paint, I'm going to clean my paintbrush first, and put some green paint on my foil next. And I'm going to use my paintbrush to paint 
the inside of my plates. Try to get into all the grooves, cover the plate completely. This is where it, it really helps to have a covered surface because when you're painting the edges, you're likely to get paint all over the place. We don't want that. Um, if you're using washable paints, of course, it'll wipe right off. Um, if you're using the acrylic craft paint, um, you might have a little bit of problems if you wait long enough for it to dry. So I am just going to paint one of these plates so I can show you how long it's taking me to do. I already have some that I've painted already that are already dry. So I can go ahead and show you the next step without having to wait for these to dry. So not painting in any specific direction for this. I'm just kind of smushing it on with my brush covering it completely. We don't want any lumps or bumps of paint so that it does dry rather quickly. Almost done. So again, you want to paint all three of your plates. So that was pretty quick. I have one painted green plate. I want all of you to go ahead and paint all three of your plates. I'm going to move mine off to the side because like I said, I already painted um, ahead of time so that they can dry. So these are my dry plates that I have. And I actually painted four. I do recommend you painting an extra just in case you make a mistake. You already have it um, painted and then, you know, you can easily just grab another plate. It doesn't take a lot of time to do so. So. Next step, once your plates are dry, and I do recommend that they are dry because otherwise you're gonna have green fingers, um, you're gonna get paint all over the place. It shouldn't take long, especially if you're using temper paint. Temper paints are made to dry rather quickly for kids. Um, so as soon as they are dry, again, I want you to lay those three pieces out. You're gonna be cutting out triangles with these. So I'm gonna have a little lead pencil here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little dot in the middle of my first plate. And I know that's kind of hard to see, but it's right here in the center. That's just going to be a guide for where I'm going to be painting. My next plate, I'm going to do one right below where that center dot would have been, which would be right here. And then the last one, I'm going to put one a little bit higher, which would be up top. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just draw lines straight off to the side. Let me go over that with a Sharpie so that you can see it a little bit better. This is going to be for each part of your Christmas tree. There we go. So I have like a big triangle almost. I'm gonna do that with all three of my plates. This is gonna be the guide for me to use when I'm doing my cutting. So you should kind of have like a small, a medium, and a large. So now that I have all of my triangles, I have my small, I have my medium, and I have my large. You're gonna grab your scissors if you are Doing this with little children, make sure that you're using kid-friendly scissors or that you are just keeping an eye out. We don't want any accidents. Cutting paper plates is a little different than cutting paper because the edges kind of go up a little bit. Um, so it does make it a little different. We just want to be extra careful for our kiddos. And let's see, I'll cut this little one here. So I now have one, two, and I'm going to cut my last one here. They kind of look like big pieces of green pie. And I'm just getting rid of my scraps. You can also keep the scraps. Um, that way at the end when you're decorating your tree, 
Um, you can use them to paint additional colors on. If you don't have um, buttons or extra paper, you can always use the extra paper plates. So I just have to trim this one just a little bit more so I can make sure it is a medium size. Perfect. So now I have my large, my medium, and my small. So they should all be the same triangular shape, but one is just going to be slightly smaller than the next. What you want to do now is plug your hot glue gun in. That would be helpful. And you're going to make sure that this is dry. And if there's any little spaces that you missed on here, you can maybe touch those up. While we're waiting for the hot glue gun, um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut two little holes into the sides of this paper towel roll. And that's going to be if you want to hang up your Christmas tree. So I'm just going to kind of pinch it on the side and put one little cut there. I'm going to pinch it on the other side and put one little cut there. That's going to allow me to have two openings. I do recommend that adults are doing this part um, or that you're just being extra, extra careful. If you have a hole puncher, that would work also. And I have some string here that I was using to make some Christmas wreaths. So I have this left over. And I'm just going to loop this right through the first hole. And I'm going to pull it right into the second one. And pull it all the way through, make sure it's even. And I'm just going to tie a knot on the top. This step is optional for you. If you just want your tree to be standing, then you can skip right over this step. Um, but I like to kind of have the option, especially with the little kids. Um, you know, they might use it to just like carry it around, show it off to everybody. Um, again, if you're not going to use that though, you can then just like tuck it right inside and then you won't even know it's there. So this is nice and dry now. My hot glue gun should be heated up. I'm going to start off with the bigger piece. So I have three total. I'm using the larger one. I'm going to use my hot glue gun carefully. Um, again, you can also use Elmer's glue or whatever kind of glue that you have at home. Um, but to show you how quickly that this will dry um, and for not making you wait, I'm going to put just a little line of glue on here. And I'm going to glue down my first green triangle. I'm going to add a little bit extra on the top so it really stays. Just be careful when you're using hot glue guns. The surface is very hot. As an artist, I feel like I lost the feeling in my fingertips from glue guns. So it doesn't really bother me much. But your first one will look like this. You're going to have a little bit of your tree trunk on the bottom. And then you'll have your blank space on the top for the next two. So you're going to layer the next one. So what I like to do is put the glue kind of like three quarters of the way up and then going right to the tip of the first piece. So I'm going to use my glue gun again and put some glue on there. And I'm going to get my medium piece and I'm going to just attach that, push on it a little bit so make sure it sticks. And I already have my second one. Last, I'm going to put again about three quarters of the way up and right to the tip of the paper towel holder. So right to the top and then I'm just going to attach my other piece. Look at that. We have the cutest little Christmas tree. So now it's time to decorate it. Of course, if you were using um, an Elmer's glue, you might have to wait a couple of minutes to make sure that these pieces are really stuck on there and dry. Otherwise, you're just going to pick it up and it's going to kind of flop over. 
Um, so some things that I have here to decorate, I have, of course, my little thing of buttons. I have some yellow construction paper. And if you're not a sparkly kind of person, if you've been in my studio, you know that you're leaving covered in glitter. Um, I have some glitter here and I have a piece of paper to catch all the glitter so that I can, of course, fold it back up and kind of put it back in so it can be reused. Um, if you've ever been in my studio, though, I'm telling you, you will leave sparkly. So if you don't like sparkles, just kind of skip this part. Um, but kids love sparkles and I kind of love sparkles. I don't love sparkles in my classroom, but I like them in my studio. So we'll have those as well to kind of just add a little shimmer, make it look like snow in a way and we'll start decorating. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I like to do a little star. I added a star on the top of this one by simply cutting out a little star that I drew on to construction paper. If you don't have construction paper, you can also use uh, your scraps from your paper plates and you can just paint those and cut them out of there. That way you're saving yourself on supplies also. So I'm just going to cut my star out. It's not perfect, but it's there. Again, going to use my hot glue gun, put that star right on the tip of my Christmas tree, and glue that baby on. Put my scraps off to the side. You can also reuse those scraps to, again, add more decoration. Today, I have a thing of buttons, just a little container that I had with my craft stuff. I'm going to pick out some of the smaller ones. Um, you can also use those little fuzzy pom-poms. You can use plastic beads. You can paint it and just paint the um, decorations onto it. You can pull holes into your Christmas tree and put actual Christmas lights on them, like the little battery operated ones. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Kind of be creative with it. Think of how you want your tree to look. The kids will have a lot of fun with that too. So I just picked out a little pile of my smaller beads and now I'm gonna use my hot glue gun to carefully glue them onto the tree so that we have a little bit of decoration. I like the way that the buttons look on this. It just makes it look more crafty and artsy, I guess you would say. So I'm using some small buttons, some medium buttons, and some of them are a little bit bigger. Just be careful when you are gluing them on. Buttons have little tiny holes in them so the glue will seep through. I don't want anybody getting hurt if you're using a hot glue gun. And I'm just gonna add like four or five to every um, part of the Christmas tree. And just kind of randomly place them. Almost done. Just a couple more to go. One little tiny dot will definitely do it to hold them on there. The only bad thing I hate about hot glue guns is all the little stringy stuff that you get. It pulls off really easy, but it's just kind of annoying. So one of the perks of using, say, Elmer's glue would be that you don't have to pull all those strings off. So just tiny little dots onto your buttons or whatever supply you are using to decorate your tree. Mine are all really colorful. Like I said, I think it just adds like a really nice extra like texture to it. A little something different than what we're used to. All right, I think we're good. So this is my Christmas tree so far. It's just about finished. I have my star, my buttons are glued on, my three paper plate pieces, my paper towel roll for the trunk. I have my string tucked inside so it doesn't get in the way. 
I think the very last thing that I want to do is add some sparkles. So I'm gonna get my piece of paper and I'm going to put that down here. And this one I'm actually gonna use my Elmer's glue for because it just works so much better with glitter. And I'm gonna line the bottom outline of the Christmas tree with glue. You don't need a lot, just a very thin line. So we're gonna carefully do that. And you know, of course the kids are gonna go crazy with the glue and the glitter and they're gonna want it everywhere because sparkles are everything. But you can do that. And I have my sparkles. I'm gonna do it over my paper because it is gonna come out super fast. And this is just gonna give it like a little shimmer, kind of like a little snow on it some sparkle and then I'm going to shake it off onto my paper and then use the extras that are on there to just kind of dip it again make sure that it covers all the glue spaces if you don't have glue for the glitter um, and you're just strictly using like a hot glue gun, you can also put the glitter on the wet paint before you attach everything and then it will dry that way. But you can see that I got a nice little sparkle on there. And there you have it. You have your Christmas tree. It will stand up or you can hang it. And they're really awesome if you have different um, ones to display together. You can do like a whole little Christmas tree farm. Um, you can put a magnet on the back of them and hang them on the refrigerator. You can hang them up as like an ornament or a decoration. Um, they're really just awesome to have and really cute. Um, you could even make them double-sided. And I have some extra pieces here to show you that you can just attach them right to the back so that you have them displayed on both sides. So that would just be, you know, the same exact thing, but you're doing it on the back side as well. And then you'll have a two-sided Christmas tree, more like three-dimensional. I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. If you do it at your own home, please let me know. I want to see them. You can find me on Facebook, Electric City Art Studio, or you can find me on Instagram with the, the little at sign and Electric City Art Studio and the, um, the underscore is after it. Please tag me in your pictures. I would love to see them. I'd love to see the Christmas trees that you decorate and to see how you decorate them, what supplies you're using at home. Um, I do hope that you all have a really, really awesome Christmas and a happy holiday. And I hope that I'm able to meet some of you. Stop in the studio and say hi. I'm there on Saturdays from 12 to 4. And, you know, come create with me. Show me what you can do. It was so nice doing this video with you. I hope you all have an awesome time creating. Thanks, everybody. Enjoyed that fun Christmas activity by artist Amber Cipriani of Electric City Art Studio. Uh, you can find more holiday programming on the Electric City TV. Well, I hope you enjoyed that fun uh, Christmas tree activity with local artist Amber Cipriani of Electric City Art Studio. Uh, remember, you can find more of these holiday programs on ECTV uh, YouTube page. We, we really want to thank them. They've been a great partner during this uh, time creating this virtual programming. And please stay safe, healthy, and Mary, and remember to shop locally. Please visit LackawannaMarkets.com, and we'll see you next time.